Hey everyone, welcome back to Casual Watch Talk Live. Well, you saw the thumbnail, we've got something of a micro brand special, micro brand madness we're calling it. So we picked our favourite micro brands, I used to cover a lot on the channel and I, I don't anymore and I feel like they need a little bit of love so we're going to do some, uh, some micro brands. But before we get there, I'm going to introduce my my host, got my co-host Jason from rocksrolling.com. Hello. And we've got Patrick from Pocket Watch Time on YouTube and associated Instagram accounts. Hey, everybody. Hey. Uh, Patrick, do you want to kick us off with a wristwatch check, a wristwatch check? Oh, well, I've got an exciting wristwatch Ooh, check. Oh, so uh, I'm oh, actually oh. not wearing it because I was outside all day, but I, uh, I got my new Grand Seiko, my first... Grand Seiko ever. Oh, oh yeah. Wow, man. So, so this is Beautiful. the SBGY009. And uh, right now it's on the leather, but I actually ordered a, uh, a bracelet from Grand Seiko. It'll be here on Thursday so that I can get a lot more wear out of it because I'm just not a bracelet guy. And uh, But uh, there's no way I can catch the light of the dial very well because there's a, there's a similar dial called the SBGY003 which has sort of the sun ray white, but this one they sort of put a lacquer over so that it's smooth, but when the light catches it, you can see all these ridges going out on the edges. And oh, I nice. said, the, the dial is what won me over. So the minute I saw this dial, I said, I'm going to make this mine. So what are the details then? It's spring drive, but it's the new style where the, is, is there a thing on the back or is it, they just don't have the... Well... Yeah, I was going to ask about the case back. Yeah. So the... This is a this is the manual wind version, so so it's got a a spring drive, but it's actually manual wind. So and you can see that tiny little circle there with the power reserve next to the the winding oh, barrel. Wow. Oh, the blue but uh, but it does have you know if you could just catch it in just the right light, that they're still putting that tiny little insignia of theirs on the back, but they've lightened it so much that you really can't even see it. But, yeah. uh, but you know, the advantage of this watch, because of that, it's only 10.5 milli millimeters thick. So it's, in the grand scheme of Grand Seiko-ness, it's a, it's a very thin watch. So yeah. It looks like it curves yeah. really nice to your wrist, too. There's just like a yeah. subtle curve in the case. So yeah, it's their, their yeah. 44 GS case, which is kind of what they're classically known for. So as I said, right now, it's a little too dressy for me. But once I, uh, once I get it on the bracelet, you know, then I'll, then I'll love it. Is this part of their... Is it Evolution 9 or something? Is... This one isn't. So, uh, yeah, I, I've kind of been torn because I've really been wanting to get a Grand Seiko for a while. And um, the the Evolution 9 has a, a kind of a really cool case shape that I like, but they changed the hands and they did some things just otherwise that I don't really care for so much. And so I really like sort of their classic, you know, old school shape with the the skinny hands the the evolution nine's got these sort of big broader hands and uh as i said just kind of a kind of an interesting thing but but i i got this last week and uh made a little video on it and i guess i'm the uh the first uh youtube video in the entire cyberspace world on this watch because uh my video is just completely blowing up because there's no other videos out there so i uh, said so that's kind of cool yeah and, i'm uh, I'll, I'll definitely be watching i've had a chance to watch it yet but yeah, check it out on uh, Pocket Watch Time, everyone. Yeah, because I, you know, you look at all the analytics that most of my videos get 200 views in a couple of days. I'm already at like 3,000 in two days. I'm like, holy mackerel, that's a popular video. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and while you're at it, like subscribe to, to Patrick's and also subscribe to us and give us some upvotes like uh, John at T and Tickers. Thank you for upvoting. Time and Tested. Thank you for upvoting. Jeremy, thank you very much for upvoting. And then, uh, hello, Junior from Michigan. There you go. Cool. All right, so, uh, Jason, what's uh, what's on your wrist? Let me do. Something. It's not on my wrist. I took it off though, so I can get a close up. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Zodiac Zulu Oscar nine two seven one compression style case. Two tone. Two tone. I know that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a two tone Zodiac. Yes, there's a couple. I think that's the only one they do, or, or the uh, recent. Yeah, the website's interesting because when you go on there, it looks like there's different models, but this is all part of the compression. 
but it, they call it the two tone uh, automatic, but it's the same <laughs> compression case as the other ones. It's just a different number. It's got a, I apologize to anyone. It's got a double de a butterfly deploying on there and have a pretty damaged right hand. So for me, putting stuff on, it gets a little, a little, there, there it is. See, seven and a half inch know. wrist. So there's a little jangle in it. I, I got it sized. I just wanted the little jangle. I figure if it was gold two tone, uh, Jubilee braces should have a little jangle. Yeah. And in honor of Sam, I'm announcing it here. Uh, I think starting September 1st, because I like to start stuff either on the first day of the week or the first day of the month, I'm going to do the one month challenge with this watch. I'm going to wear it every single day, except for when I do like lawn activities. I'm not, I'm not bringing this in the yard. I'm going to garment it up like Sam does. <laughs> and then when I work out, I'm not I'm not wearing this when I work out because I think that's a little much. Um, but every other time, I'll wear it every day. I'll wear it every time we go somewhere. And I'm going to do like a, a little live feed on Instagram to kind of talk about it. And then I'll do a giant like series of posts, like maybe a weekly update on my on my blog to talk about it because it'll be the first. Well, it's the first gold watch I've ever owned. Nice. It's the first two tone watch I've ever owned. And if I'm being honest, like. It might be the night, the nicest, fanciest one. If that makes sense, the yeah. Zin's really nice, but the, I wouldn't call the Zin fancy in the terms of style. I would call it fancy in terms of what it can do and how it's engineered. But this is just looks fancy kind of thing. So we'll go from there. Beautiful watch, I love it. It's comfortable. Yeah, I love the two tone uh, Jubilee. That's great. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. I, whenever I look at those Zodiac Super Sea Wolves, it's either that one that I like, and then they do that one that's got the dark blue dial as well. And I think they've got the color combination of that right. But I think the two tone looks looks awesome. <laughs> cool. Gonna... Well, we're gonna do. We're, we've each picked some micro brands, and then we'll go through them and talk about what we like about them, why we've picked them. So, Patrick, I'll go to you first, and. I th is this a micro brand loom tech i'm gonna let you just i'm gonna let you uh defend this as a micro brand <laughs> okay well uh so here's my definition of a micro brand so micro brand pretty much means that they use in or non in-house movements and they pretty much don't have a conglomerate company to own them so they're they're pretty much just kind of a they're an independent but they're not big enough to be you know, sort of what we generally call an independent. Because to me, that's kind of the tough part is independent and micro brand kind of cross streams a lot. And, you know, when, when does a brand like Moser become, you know, an independent versus a micro brand? And yeah. so for me, I guess the difference is, you know, they pretty much use, you know, off the shelf movements. You know, they, they really just kind of put it all together, but they probably really aren't building too much of it. And, so I said that's that's kind of my reasoning for for going you know micro, and uh, the the reason I chose them, even though I have to be honest, Loom Tech, I'm sorry, I don't really like anything too much in your current catalog, <laughs> but but I own two of their watches. I've had them for over a decade, and their watches are actually really really well built. And you know what got me back then was they used to do a lot of sort of experimentation you know the watches i have from loom tech are tungsten and for a while they were making cobalt watches and i think they're even making an aluminum watch and they do have a bronze watch in their catalog so at least they've done a little bit of something but i can kind of tell that they've sort of cheapened the brand a little bit they're using a lot more quartz you know they're 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 not really being as innovative as they were how dare so, you patrick I, i'm an honest guy i said i still <laughs> love them though but the part that I said, you know, gives them the, the biggest props and bonus points is they are the nicest company. They, all of their watches, they guarantee pretty much for life to pressure test and adjust. And so if your watch is running a little slow, you know, it might actually need a service. But if you send it into them, they'll pretty much recalibrate it and time it to, to you know, cost standards. And they'll, you know, give it a new seal and a pressure test. And they do that all free. And wow. you know, I said, that's just, that's a really nice service. And, you know, and they're really pleasant about it too. You call them up and, you know, they're not making any excuses. They're like, great, just send it on, put this little mm -hmm. number on there with it. And, you know, we'll get it back to you in a couple of weeks. And I'm like, to me, I said, they get mad kudos for being an experimental brand, for having wonderful customer service. 
I just want them to kind of go back to their roots and be a little bit more innovative. So do it, Loom Tech, and I'll buy another watch. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Michael, no, this isn't. This is completely pre recorded. <laughs> you missed the live. <laughs> <laughs> Um, excellent. Okay. Well, uh, Jason, should we go with uh, your Let's one? do it. Okay. This is a big one. This is the Crepes. Professional. Yeah. 1200 meter iconic 80s made Swiss diver watch. I would recommend that they shorten their terms, but I know they're a Spanish company, so maybe it's something lost in translation. So um, I saw this... Po I I've been I've been looking at Crepes for a while, and uh, I'm just going to say Crepes because I don't want to like throw on some fake accent because I'm from Southern California and I don't really have an <laughs> accent. But anyways, I've been looking at Crepes for a while, and there's some people I know on Instagram and follow, like Don Rogan. He pops in the show once in a while. Don's got one. Um, I've seen some other people with him, different ones. I think he has the the super big honking one. But I've always loved. It, it looks like they offer a lot of models that are i guess the word homage or whatever but on watches that either are really hard to find nowadays or they just don't make them anymore and so i've seen that there was a kickstarter for a while and they were going to have one so i just started following say hey what's going on let's see what's going to happen and when this thing popped up i was like oh man i really like this this is i like this design and so i just started like looking around for similar titles because i'm still like learning a lot of the brands and i never knew that hoyer made this dive watch a long time ago so then i'm like all right let me check ebay it's like 2300 bucks and i was like i'm not buying one so <laughs> i'm like let's check out the kickstarter and so i just did a little bit of research and, and so and you'll hear everyone will hear it here first sam always tells us not to give away the story before when we're talking so here's a story everyone knows that i love the rolex explorer 2 that's that's my attainable grail um i want it for my 50th birthday i'm gonna get it for my 50th birthday uh, I don't know if I would love to wear a white dial watch with a bracelet and kind of in a dive case style. And I'm a big proponent of if you can find something that's relatively similar, and I know this isn't exactly similar, but you can wear it for a while at a price that's going to be a lot cheaper than the one that you want to get, then try it out. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh, man, I like the case shape. It's just the right amount of brushed. I love the dial. Um, the hands, I mean, if the hands are black, I, I, I guess they're okay. There's a lot of contrast there. But I want the white dial one. Mm -hmm. And I want to wear it for a while, and I want to see what it's at. I, I, I asked through DM a bunch of people that have the Crepes brand, and they're all like, dude, we love them. They're well made. Um, you know, if, if you contact them about something, they, they let you know, what they help you out and stuff, kind of like you said, Patrick, about Loom Tech. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like, the one thing I heard though from everybody is like the de the build quality is insane. Yeah, it's just it's just really hardy, and so that's the one I got. And I got the I, I asked in the Discord group, hey, hey you know, because I, I did a little bit of research on the Ronda movement versus the Eta twenty eight twenty four. Tech yeah, two. that's the unique thing, isn't it? It's this is the first time when you mentioned it that I knew that Ronda did mechanical movements. I'd never I've never seen them in any other watch. Yeah. And, and what everybody in the Discord basically told me was, and I really try, like, if you haven't joined the casual watch review Discord group, you really should because there's a lot of well informed and knowledgeable people in there that are more than willing to help you with the, their information and, and knowledge they possess. And they all basically told me, like, hey, there's not enough information on the Ronda movement, even though they do have a large like supply chain and can replace stuff. Mm -hmm. But the ETA 2824 Tech 2 is, is tried and tested. And so, for a little bit of more, a little bit more money, I just want the Etta, and so I haven't got the email yet asking me which one what I want, but I'm gonna get the white dial one and see how I really feel about wearing a white dial because to me it's more. I know the case isn't the same as the Explorer two, but I feel like the general. I feel like when you have a white dial, it's it's either gonna be for you or it's not gonna be for you. And I feel like what I know about the company and from people I've spoke and if I end up not digging it, I could always sell it and maybe make my money back or even make a little bit, or even if I take a little bit of loss, I know it's a good watch and I won't feel bad for selling it. Cause there's a couple other micro brands that I've purchased when I started collecting that I can't sell. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? I, I can't even sell them and lose money. That's kind of disappointing because um, they're basically decent watches, but no one wants them. So I just took that all into consideration because I want a white dial watch. I want to I want to see if I like it. And all the feedback I got from everybody was that they're they're a great quality build. Their customer service is excellent. So, and then when I when this comes in, I am then going to do a gigantic paring down of my collection. Oh because, boy! Yeah, no, I really am because. Yeah. Because I want, you know, these guys all know that I want like, like a five or six watch collection eventually, but I'd really like to get it down to three to five of just really nice pieces. And um, I think I can get it down to five now and I'm going to sell, I think, I, I think I'm going to sell a couple of things that would surprise some people, but I just want to get a nice rotation and not have to like fret about what I'm picking. And I'm at that point now where it's like, well, what am I going to? I gotta wind this one. I gotta set the date. You know, I don't know. It's a bunch of stuff, but they're all first world problems. But this is the one I went with, and that's the reason why I went with it. And I, I'm looking forward to it showing up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got an interesting question here. Well, a statement from Sam. Thanks for joining us again, Sam. Uh, thanks for being on the last couple of live streams. Uh, you said that my I. You said you're thinking of a micro brand, and you couldn't decide between Christopher Ward and Farah. I don't think Christopher Ward is a micro brand. I think they're too big now to be a micro brand. In fact, I'll be interviewing Mike um, on the 28th, I think it is. So tune in if you've got any questions for Mike France. He's not going to come on live. I'm going to try and talk him into live, but I'm going to pre-record it. But I would say Christopher Ward was too big to be a micro brand now. Um, but fairer, yeah, I would say. Uh, but I, you know, Christopher Ward's my all-time, one of my best value yeah, uh, watch brands. I, I just love them. Um, well, Jason, okay. we, we Jason, we need you to be the tiebreaker. So uh Sam's got his micro brand definition. I've got my micro brand definition. Yeah. What's yours? Oh. Okay. Good I think role. it's gotten I think it's gotten cloudy too because there are some brands that people wouldn't consider micro brands that are doing Kickstarters. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I think the ability to have continuity in service, physical service, not customer service. I mean, physically servicing the watches. I think if you make one-offs and you sell them and that's it, you're a micro brand. I feel like if you have the ability to say, we're selling this one and then we're going to continue to sell it afterwards, but you just get in early, then, then maybe you're not. And then I've also noticed, like, I've talked to people, like, in reviews and stuff. People tell me, oh, we're not a micro brand. We're an independent. And some people don't say anything. And I think yeah. that comes down to how they're owned, like Sam said mm -hmm. earlier. So I did a review for William Wood Watches, which a lot of people don't even know about. They're out of England. They take recycled or upcycled firefighting hoses and, you know, metals from the helmets. <clears throat> the gentleman, Johnny Garrett, his shout out, Johnny, great guy. His grandfather was in the British fire service for 25 years. And a cool thing is that they have hoses. They take the hoses, make straps. They take some of the helmets and put it in the cases. Uh, beautiful watches, uh, really well made. Uh, and the cool part is like, I guess each fire brigade or fire department, whatever you want to call it in England is allowed to have whatever color hose they want. So it's like the wild, wild west of firefighting hoses. And when I was talking to Johnny, I talked to him, the owner, I, um, he straight up told me we're an independent. And, and I felt the difference is, is that there was someone I could actually talk to. Not a marketing rep, not, not some rando person they put on the phone. It was the owner of it. And at that point, I felt like, well, he is an independent brand. And I feel like his, his angle and the, the ethos and what they're trying to do, you know, it's an honor of his grandfather and they, they donate to firefighting charities. Like if you go to their website and read it, it's it's nailed down what they want to do and what their plan is. So for me, I would call them an independent. Now there's another gentleman, and I'm sorry I didn't bring this stuff up before Sam, but I didn't know I was going to get asked to be a tiebreaker. But uh, there's another company called Millar Watches that I've worked with and done a review on his watch, and he has a scuba. Now he's the owner, small. I would call independent. I'm sure he would call himself independent. He is the only person I've talked to about this, and he took all the feedback he got from the watches that were originally sent out and has made wholesale changes based off that. So he went from like a polished finish to a brush finish. He's on Kickstarter and it's Millar for anyone looking M I double L M I double L A R watches. 
And, you know, he's on Kickstarter. But if you if you email him, you're getting the direct link. And it's a great watch. It's like 375 pounds. That's an independent. But there are some people who just have sent me ran, what I call rando messages that it almost looks like a electronic robot sent them to me. Yeah. Like, like the T-1000 from 1989 is like, please let me come in your house so I can kill you. It'll be kind of thing. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's the big difference for, for me. Like, and then I think some brands transcend that. I'm, I'm not really giving a great answer, but Christopher Ward used to, I think, be a micro brand. But I think that the, Mike Pierce, the gentleman that started them, has maintained what he did as a micro brand as they become bigger. So he's still available and it provides access to people like Sam who have a platform. To, he gets up and talks like all the stuff we ever talk about before in the pot. Every time we have a live stream, what do we talk about? If the companies just explain themselves, we would know what was going on. Yeah. Well, he's taken that from being a micro brand. I, I guess he's a macro brand now, but I just really think for me and, and anyone in the comments can tell me if they agree or disagree, but a micro brand is faceless and an independent brand is not. That's a good point, actually. To yeah, me. yeah. So, so Mike Pearson is kind of Zodiac is kind of in, well, it's within um, the Fossil Group, isn't it? Yes. But it behaves as if it's an independent. And then, yeah, Mike Prance over his award. And, and then think about Zodiac, though, real quick. Like Mike Pearson has got up and explained, hey, look, Fossil knows what Zodiac is. Fossil knows that it's the one mechanical brand. They're trying to get the heritage out there. They're putting their money behind it. It's not what it was back in the day. You know, three, three or four sentences tells everybody and if you don't like their design aesthetic what they're doing you don't got to get one but if you're halfway interested now maybe it cues your curiosity you know and i had a real hard time not buying that william wood watch that got sent to me i almost bought it but i was like yeah. oh man i got other stuff you know and so i think that for me is to answer your question patrick yeah that's the difference because like like if, if patrick if you started like you know a lot about watches like I feel like if you started a watch company, you would talk to people and give them information and you would take from your long line of design elements that you understand and stuff. And, you know, I, I, I feel like you would be an independent watch brand and not a micro brand so much, you know? I yeah, see. Cause it's tricky because I think a lot of micro brands want to be independent because independent is a cool buzzword right now, or micro brand kind of makes people go, Ooh, micro brand scary. Yeah. And so, so that it's tough. I think the micro brands are fighting to be called independence. And so I, it does sort of muddy the waters even a little bit more, but, but I like what you said. I, I kind of agree a of a focal point or a face to the brand does maybe make you a little bit more independent than micro. So I yeah. like by that. Yeah. It's an interesting, yeah. Interesting point. Well, I'll, I'll go in with my uh, next one as well. So this, I mean, this is a, this is a brand with a face, but I've got to give a shout out to Dave over at Detroit Mint. Um, full disclosure, he's, he's sent me watches into the channel to review in the past, but he's, I, I just recently reviewed this speed timer. I, I, I called it a tribute because it's not a direct homage of the Seiko speed timer. In fact, it's a combination of a few, but he is just a real passion for watches. Um, this Cobra was one I reviewed as well. He sent me in for a review that he created based on the uh, Ford versus Ferrari film. And then my favorite one that he's ever done is this brush gold. He did basically did a homage to uh, the watch that Brad Pitt wore in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the Citizen watch. And he loved it so much that he created his own version of it. So there's a quartz and a mechanical. But he's just a real passionate watch collector that designs watches that he thinks are cool. And usually usually the quartz movements or um, seagull movements, so the, the, the level is very cheap. And also as well, just a little, little shot over the bowels for Shinola. Dave is actually from <laughs> Detroit. He's based in Detroit, and the money stays in Detroit, unlike uh, unlike the shoe polish company. But that's a that's a whole different live stream. <laughs> um, Detroit Rock City, baby. Yeah. So so there you go. So that's that's my uh, that's my next one. Detroit Mint. A big big shout out to uh, Dave as well. So Patrick, next up on the block here. This is an interesting one. I've never heard of. This is uh, mechanic with a K. Yep. So the have you guys ever seen a watch that looks eerily similar? Like Namos a little bit or Yeah. Okay. Like so Namos. this is a 
this is the brainchild of uh, Lu- Ludwig Oxlin and Paul Gerber. And they released this watch in about 2000, and it was the MIH watch. And what's really cool about it is there's just some really interesting tech. So Ludwig Oxlin, he's the guy who was is pretty much the brainchild of Elise Nardin and also shares his name to Oaks and Jr. as a, oh, as a watch right. manufacturer. Yeah, And that is a... ETA or a Valju 7750 base, but it's an annual calendar. It's a mono pusher chronograph. It's just got all of these extra things thrown into it. And they, they released it initially for almost like a charity for this museum, which is what the MIH stands for, the Museum de Horologie. But um, I guess they stopped making it like five years ago. And one of the people who was a part of it, I guess, just decided that he doesn't want it to die. And so he's, he's pretty much, I'm, I'm guessing, got permission. But that's why they're calling it the M2, because it's, it's really the M- MIH part two. And I think he changed a little bit with, the, with sort of a, a running 30-minute timer on the dial. But I don't know. It's just a really cool little watch. And... I said, I just, I love all the tech and spec and just the cool stuff behind it. And, uh, and definitely, I think they're a one-off. So I, I think I can get that in there at the micro brand level because my other two choices might not fit by, uh, by Sam's rules. Um, but, uh, well, this is an open discussion. <laughs> this is an open forum. I, I just, but so this is interesting. So it's a mono pusher chronograph. But I mean, how does that work? Do these dots kind of uh, light up as the counter instead of so, it being a hand? Or and it's it, got the if, day date and the month. Mm-hmm. So it's got a, a day date and a day night indicator on the on the linear. It's then the the mono pusher activates the the second hand, which is the the chronograph. The wheel is a 30 minute wheel. And so kind of like Oaks and Jr. does on their annual calendars and a bunch of other their watches, they use that circular dot. And so there will be a little red dot inside the circle so you can track the 30 minutes. Uh. And then on the back, on the original MIH, there's no picture of the back on this one, but I'm guessing they copied everything else. There's a little circular window for running seconds. Because, hmm. you know, if you don't want the chronograph to run, you want to know your watch is working. There's a uh, there's a little peep, peephole in the back that has running seconds. That's fascinating. Uh, this so is the first it... time I've ever heard of this watch. Yeah, yeah but it's just a really, so really that, cool watch. So that red tip is the chronograph hand? Yes. And then the dots are the 30-minute counter, and there's like a little red dot that indicates where it's up mm-hmm. to. That's fascinating. So, I mean, annual calendar, mono pusher chronograph, you know, base 7750 movement, and, you know, comes in at about $6,300. This was just released within the week. So, new release. You've heard it here first. Wow. So, the, the dotted circle on the at the 12 o'clock is... For the thirty minute tracker, yeah, that's the thirty. Is it light? Timer. It's it's lights. You said it's not lights. It's a it's a rotating color disc. So oh, okay. when you look underneath it, you can see a little red dot. And and they should have done that around the around the minutes as well <laughs> for the second or something. You know what I mean? Uh huh. No, I mean it's you're like, right. I mean you got all. It's those, like a reverse uh, mundane. It's really. How thick is it? Do you know how thick it is? Oh, it's it's probably it's a pretty thick boy. So it's it's not a small watch. Yeah, it looks thick. It's nice though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Well, then next on my list is again. I, I mean, I'm I'm doing these definitions, aren't I? But now I'm thinking maybe Boulder isn't a micro brand either anymore. <laughs> but I um I, I really like Boulder watches. I believe they're out of Singapore. They've sent me a few in for review, actually. And um, so I've reviewed three or four of them. I reviewed this Medic watch. I reviewed uh, this watch as well, this Expedition 2. And then they have another one called The Venture. And I reviewed both the um, Quartz and Mechanical. So here's The Venture. The Quartz Mechanical and this uh, Black Dial one as well is all reviewed on my channel. I just, I think they're, I think they're, extremely well made the their utilization of titanium is awesome uh, i think i commented on this in my last review that 
you know, these big brands that make a song and dance out of using titanium, some of these micro brands are doing a, an, an awesome job at it. They've grown much larger now. And what I loved about them was that not a single one of their watches, they didn't even start out with a homage. They went straight off the bat with this um, globe trotter and, and it, this this geometric shape that they have to all of their watches. And I think they just offer... They're not the, the cheapest watches in the world at all, but they just offer great build quality and great value. And they, they use Salita and, and a few others as well. And a few of the guys, I believe, from Boulder then started that Rise brand as well. So that's how there's a mm. design aesthetic to the two. But um, yeah, I've always been one of my favorites, uh, Boulder. And um, when I was reviewing micro brands, I used to, used to quite like reviewing them as well. Always, always, a, always a decent watch. There you go. If you if you ever seen one, Jason, at Boulder, I've never seen one in real life. Yeah, same here. But I, I mean, know. everyone that's ever I don't know the people that have I've seen online that have bought them seem to really dig them mm -hmm. and really appreciate the build quality and stuff like that. So you know, yeah, I actually on the last one, um, the last review that I did, well, the second to last review I did, I did the Boulder Medic, and I got. One of our viewers and Facebook members, Luke, who is a medic, and he was also a field medic, I believe, in the in the Australian Army, and uh, he actually reviewed whether it would be useful to a medic, and he was <laughs> he was he was a little bit back and forth on it because he was saying, yeah, it would be useful, but um, I'm sure you know, Patrick, you can attest to this that you're doing the maths in your head anyway, and that you're actually really just using the second hands of a watch when you're taking like um, you know people's heartbeats and things like that or your timing and stuff yeah um, and a lot of times like in a i mean in a critical situation your primary thing is like you do i was an emt for three years right because oh, yeah. i worked at a firefighting school and we had to have emts at a high-risk trainer right so the first thing you do whenever you roll up you do a, a scene assessment right like you're taking a look to make sure that you helping someone isn't going to get you killed because like if there's bullets flying and you're on a residential street, like maybe you wait a second before you go help somebody. You know what I mean? But like a lot of times they sell these things and I feel like the, the general public doesn't realize like, oh yeah, it's great that you can check someone's blood pressure, but like that's not really happening. Like you triage first, you, you get to a safe place, like all this other stuff's happening. And by that point, you probably have something on you that can take someone's pulse yeah. and someone's <laughs> pressure you know what i mean i'm gonna say i like, i feel for a pulse to make sure they're still alive but i'm not yeah. counting anything <laughs> yeah. Like the watch not, says you. yeah yeah there you go awesome well uh patrick this is an this is you've another pick that i've never heard of before uh this is this was your next pick which uh, artisans watches well so it, the the company is called vortic and actually uh okay. oh yeah I, no vortic I, I completely fall in love with them because they're uh, they're a pocket watch redoing company. So every mm -hmm. one of these watches, you know, if you yes. click on one and flip it over, it's an old antique pocket watch that they've recased into yeah. you know a, a, a modern day wristwatch. And so oh, they wow. they pretty much find yeah. the movement, they service the movement, and then they build their own cases and, uh, you know, put them all together and, uh, and send them off. So do, do you know the whole story behind these guys, Patrick? Uh, I'm sure I did at one point. I don't really remember all of it, but, uh, they, but they no, won I... a Supreme court case. Oh, against, that's true. Because you're Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. Hamilton yeah. is suing them. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of yep. forgot about that. And, yeah, and I'll they... do a plug. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do a plug here. We'll could you say no. So there's a school in Odessa, Delaware called the Veterans Watchmakers Initiative. So if anyone's listening, um, this school was formed in the late 40s after World War II by Joseph P. Belova. So he is, you know, the founder of Belova. And he opened a watchmaking school to teach disabled veterans on how to build watches. And I mean, actually build them, not put them together, like craft the tools to build watches. So long story short, the school was around for a while. In the 90s, it kind of went away. It was brought back by a gentleman named Sam Kane. And I, did, I went and did a tour and I'm not promoting myself, but there's a whole blog post on my blog where I do a whole tour and show you the pictures and everything. But long story short, they now have a watchmaker, a watch technician course where they teach you how to repair quartzes, quartz watches. And it's, it's like, I think that one, if I remember right, it's like six weeks. And then there's a watch technician course where you, or watchmaker course where you have to pass 
that watch technician course. And that's like 16 months. And then you do a three month internship at the schoolhouse where, cause they take watches in for servicing. Mm -hmm. Vortic provided a whole building to the school, a warehouse wow. to hold all the parts and to place a service center in. So the uh, former military people have a place to work in. Uh, the school also provides free housing. So if you get it, I'm just putting this out there. If anyone knows any disabled veterans that are interested in this, they will work with the veteran service organization to get you up there. They will do a, a dexterity test. And it's not like you can fail it. Uh, they showed me some stuff. Like they had a gentleman who had really bad Bell's palsy from some incident that happened. And they were able to, to make some kind of stabilizers for his forearms so he could do the test and he passed it. And so long story short, you can go up there with the veteran service organization, work that out. They have free room, free boarding. Uh, they'll give you food when you're up there and all that stuff. So you can take the test. And then if you pass the dexterity test, they can schedule you to come up and it's all free of charge. There's nice, there's nice. no cost to the veterans whatsoever. Um, and then they also help you find, you know, jobs like you can go be an independent watchmaker if you want to, or, and they build actual watches. They, they come out. I mean, anyways, I'm going on. I don't want to take too much time, <laughs> but there's, there's a link on my blog. You can just check veteran watchmakers initiative, watchrolling.com. It'll explain everything. And, and it's an awesome school. And I'm glad you picked these guys, Patrick, because it, they do make some cool stuff. And I didn't mean to, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, guys. That's great. I, great. That's great additional detail. That was awesome. Yeah, I'd love to hear all that. But, uh, you know, the, the, obviously this is close to me as kind of a watch and pocket watch fan. And, you know, for normal people out there, you know, you can go to their website and they have what they call the watch of the day, which pretty much means at one point they were so just being bombastically popular that they, they pretty much had to limit it to we make one watch and we promote it a day and, you know, and they're for sale. And so, you know, they've got different brands from, you know, Hamilton to Waltham to et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, those you don't have a choice about, let's say, how it's made. But if you're a pocket watch fan like me, you can send your watch into them and what? they'll uh, they'll pretty much do it all for you. So so for me, pretty much this watch that I kind of have here on the side, you know, I've, I've got a really beautiful movement that, you know, I didn't really have a good case for it. And so I sent it that off to them. Freaking beautiful. Patrick. Oh, absolutely. That's why I sent it Jeez. off to them because it was just so unique. But so, uh, no, the, the issue that I ran into with them, which once again, I'll give them a plug for awesome customer service. They used to make a bronze watch. And in my head, I said, okay, this watch is red with gold accents. You know, bronze would just be a beautiful color because, you know, I don't want it to be as flashy as gold, but I want it to be gold tone. And I guess they were having problems in their manufacturing process with the bronze being too soft. So they've, they've discontinued making the bronze. And so by then they already had my watch. They were already cleaning, servicing and getting it ready to package. And so he contacted me and just said, sorry, we, we, we're, we're having a hard time finding bronze cases. You know, you can either wait and we can see if we can find a new bronze case manufacturer or, you know, let's go over some new ideas. And they actually said that they would make me a, a gold plated one, which I guess is kind of a fancy something. And, and then when we actually ended up here at the end, which you saw in the picture, he actually heat fired the titanium in a kiln similar to the way Debethune oh. does it. And so that gold color you saw is actually heat treated titanium. And, you know, the minute he sent me that photo, I'm like, that's awesome. I'll do it. And so as I said, just, Awesome. I mean, you know, not only do I love it because they're repairing all these pocket watches that I hold near and dear to my heart, but you know, they, they, uh, they also care. I mean, I said, he didn't just say, you know, you're out of luck, dude, and uh, have a nice day. You know, they really worked with me for several weeks until they sort of came up with an action plan to really make me an awesome watch. And, uh, you know, I just paid for it last week, which means we're in the final realm of construction. So, you know, sometime soon I'll have it and I'll, I'll, I'll have it as my watch of the day. Oh, awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and Jason, you just sent us over that, that article you've written. I'll leave a yeah. link to the um, in the description down below. Yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, Fantastic. just it's uh, man, I was just it, it, just blown away. I mean, because you know, I have I have my own disabilities and stuff from service and stuff that's jacked up or whatever. And 
I sustained some pretty serious injury, a pretty serious leg injury before I retired. And it kind of took my whole firefighting career or anything like that away from me. And I had to kind of reinvent myself. So I had to go to college and get my degrees and all that stuff. And um, I, anything that will help anyone that's a veteran um, stay ably employed. Cause I'm going to say mm -hmm. something like a large part of our identity gets wrapped up in what we do. And especially when you do it for 20 years and it's really hard when all of a sudden you can't do that anymore. You know what I mean? Like I was a firefighter, man. Like it was, it was the best, you know? And all of a sudden now, like you're looking at life in a cubicle and it can be daunting for some people to have what meaningful work, you know? Um, and when I went to that school, it, it's, they're not giving them anything. It's, it's definitely earned. And uh, it's just a great thing. So I just invite everyone to go look at it and uh, take a look. Cause they've, they've had some, pretty serious backing and help to because they understand the mission and everything but yeah that's it it's yeah, there for you if you want to go yep. check it out yeah highly recommend that okay well my next one then is i'm gonna do a real quick um <laughs> lightning round of other brands that i, that I, I really like but <laughs> I, I, there's one there's one that i'm definitely going to talk about more but other micro brands that i think you should definitely check out um, Phoebus, they've been a supporter of the show as well. So full disclosure, they've sent me watches in for review as well. But they, based in Hong Kong, I believe it's a husband and wife team, or it certainly started off as a husband yeah. and wife team. They, again, are, I, I would say that in the, I'll make a bold statement here, but I'd say in the sub, you know, in the three to $400 range, they do a better job than Seiko. Uh, their, their attention to detail, the, their bezel action, they use the NH35A movements in a lot of their watches, but uh, they do an absolute fantastic uh, job. I've reviewed uh, quite a few. I like I like these Eagle Rays. The these, but um, before I before I, I click off this one, Jason, your wife has a one of these, yes. doesn't she? She's a fan of this. Yeah, look brand. at Sam's recall memory. I was going to segue that, but man, you've been nailing it tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, she has the C Nymph, the new one. Oh yeah, let's have a look at that one. And oh, she yeah, loves okay. it. She has the black mother of pearl dial. Oh, and so she would be more than happy one day to come on and talk to everybody about it, to tell her what she likes. And she doesn't. Wow. Look at that dial. So check this out. So this C nymph, she's been waiting since the version one. They, they, they were out of stock for a long time. And this is what I talk about. Like they listen to the feedback because the, you see the bezel, those shark teeth used to go the opposite way. In a lot of reviews, people were like, oh man, it's really hard to turn the bezel. Because the shark fin or teeth went the opposite way and it was like slipping all over the place. So they changed that. And then I think I'm almost positive everything on the dial is applied on this one. Yep. And on the previous version, it wasn't. Mm. So it, it's it's kind of cool to see like if they've made some money to make some what we would consider more expensive material changes to the timepiece. But I'm gonna tell you right now, my wife loves this thing, she's got a six and a quarter inch wrist. She loves divers and she has the hardest time finding a divers that are uh, could, with bracelet size to smaller wrist. So she loves that thing and, and she wears it and it's fun. That dial is beautiful in the light and uh, it's a fun watch for her. Yeah, I reviewed um, they, they do an amazing job of the dials. I reviewed this uh, this Proteus. Um, but they also do one that's kind of like wrecked. Um, I forget which, which it, it, it must be in the Proteus line, but they, they used to do one that um, they'd like force aged and it had this blue dial and it, it, I did a review of it and they're just, it's like a multi-layered dial. The loom is always spot on, but yeah, I'm a big, big fan of, um, of uh, Phoebus. Uh, and then another quick shout out at Baltic. I'd have to, I have to mention Baltic. I've never seen one of these in person, but everyone that I know has ever reviewed one says they're absolutely awesome quality. I've always, I've had my eye on this um, Aquascafe uh, GMT watch. Um, the only thing that I, th that I hear people talk about is that the, the quality of the case and the hands and the dial is so good that they think that they should be using better movements. I think sometimes they, they, I think they might use Miota movements in them. This one uses a Soprod movement, but that's the only thing that you ever, you ever hear from them. But yeah, uh, I, I'm dying to see one of these in person, but you only ever hear good things. In fact, anybody else, have you ever seen a Baltic in person? Never in person, no. but same. Always only good things. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And a watch that I have seen in person, and also uh, Michael, who was in the comments before, he owns one of these. And um, in fact, Alan, who runs Zao Baltimore, has been on the show on the podcast as a guest host. But yeah, this is a, a Baltimore watch company. Alan um, from Zao Baltimore makes these watches. He, I don't know if he still does it now, but he used to make them in his house on his kitchen table. So wow. I don't know what's more micro brand than yeah. that. But yeah, he does it. He does a fantastic. <laughs> he does a fantastic job of these watches. I say that um, qualifies. No argument about micro brand there. No. No. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, so that, those are my my special mentions. And Alan, if you're watching this, uh, you're more than welcome on the show. But the one that I was going to... In fact, Patrick, we'll go with one of yours next, and then I'll go with my... Because I've only got one more pick, but you've got two. So let's have a look at your next one, which was, uh, again, another... Oh, are they are they a micro brand? And this is Formex. Well, mm. this this has been burning a hole in my uh, pocket for the last five minutes because uh, the chat has been going Formex crazy. But uh, yes. but as I said, I, I, I know I know the whole independent micro, it's hard to say, but... You know, I'm still kind of pigeonholing them into the world of micro just because they're they're not really involved with anybody else. But I said, well, we'll leave it for a little bit of debate. But what I just love is, once again, they're a little bit innovative. You know, I'm not sure if their little shock absorber system that they supposedly have built into the case is more gimmick than it is real, but I still like them for trying. You know, I said, it's just, it's it's fun when a company doesn't just do the bare minimum which is ooh, let's put a watch that we bought into a case that we bought with a dial that we bought and sell it as something you know they did some engineering yep. and as i said that that always you know just makes me mm. go yay yes. and you know that one watch that i i think was the the lead you know they they made a full carbon fiber case they made a full carbon fiber dial or like a not carbon fiber but a, a, a compressed carbon yeah. And, you know, I said, it just, it's just a bad B watch. Yeah. And as I said, I, I just really kind of like it. They have an all gray one too, Patrick, right? Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure you can get your black and gray fix. Oh, you know, bro. I think they do have one. You. That's the one that they showed on all the pictures when they came out with that newer model, right? It was oh. like slate gray. And oh man, that thing was just. So oh. no, I, I almost pulled the trigger on this one when it first came out because I just, you know, I, I still want a carbon fiber something in my, in my, my fun list of watches, but you know, something about it just made me say, okay, I'll just be a little more patient. But I said, carbon fiber is definitely on my, my hit list for something I need to buy. And, uh, and I said, this one was so close just because it, it really is. It's a, it's, it sounds like a great company similar to what you guys are talking about with Baltic and all these other brands, you know, I haven't heard anyone say anything bad about them and, no, you know, no. good quality, some engineering behind it, you know, good looking watches, you know, winner, winner for me. Yeah. And I know the guys at Scottish watches are, are fans of Formex and I, I've actually been got close to getting borrowing one for a review once but it didn't kind of work out but and um, we've got some questions coming in here so sam's uh, this might be one for you patrick have you heard of ferlin mari yeah and uh so i guess the nicest way to say about ferlin mari is you know they they got some accolades at the gphg they they won you know i think it might have been the Petite Horology Prize, but it was the inexpensive prize. And, you know, it's it's a very nice looking watch. It's kind of a retro chronograph. And uh, at least if it's the one I'm thinking of. And yeah. And, you know, it's it's a very pretty watch. It's kind of like Baltic. It's It's got good specs and it's well made and nice. And the the internet just ran away with it. And I don't really know why. And I guess that's kind of where part of his question is about the hype around it. Like, I think it's a nice watch. I think it's inexpensive, you know, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't scream excitement to me. So, you know, for me, I'm not overly interested, but, but the internet definitely was, and I don't really know why. So, oh, so the Mecca Quartz, huh? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I, I've never heard of them before, but yeah, guys, yeah. keep them, keep them coming. Um, that'd be a good hit. show to do later if we if we did one. We, I, I've I've watched a little bit about those awards, 
Um, but I haven't had a chance to deep dive it, but it, it, I find them to be pretty interesting, the different categories and stuff, but I don't know much about them yet. Yeah. I, my only take on the, the categories is there's a lot of politics behind it, which I think is, is tough because like for me, the, the icon prize went to probably the most boring watch on the entire list, which was the, uh, the Royal Oak. And you're just kind of like, well, wh- why did that win? And, you know, so there's, there's sort of some neat things about it, but I think there's a lot of politics played in it. So sometimes the, the obvious winner that, you know, everyone thinks should win doesn't, and you're like kind of confused. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Nathan's asking here, have I ever heard of Margaret, Margaret watches? Um, mm-hmm. I've not heard of them. Um, yeah, I, I have. They, uh, they, they make a pretty cool looking uh, bronze watch. It, it kind of looks like a turtle. It has sort of a weird case shape to it. At least they used to. I don't know if they've this discontinued one. that one, but but yeah, they they're they're kind of a neat watch. The price isn't too bad either. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely legible. I uh, in my youth, I lived in New Zealand for a bit, so I was I was I was interested to see where they make them. It looks like it's Auckland, which is you know probably where where a lot of the manufacturing is. Um, okay, well, my final one here is um, one of my favorite micro brands and i just like I, I, I like the guys that run it and they sent me a couple of watches in for review over the years and um you know a couple i've, I've reviewed and sent back but this is vea and um, run by two great guys ryan and reagan these guys massive watch fans but not only massive watch fans but they really care about their who buys the watches and what the people that buy the watches think of them because uh, not only do they, which is quite rare, they have a, um, they guarantee the water resistance because they were two surfers or they still do surf. They and they like recreational sports and they have friends that are divers and things like that. So they actually, um, get, they, originally they started out guaranteeing the water resistance. I'll, I'll check whether they still do that now, but at one time they would. So they started out with quartz, and then they really dived into the, um mechanical movements so they use uh, i believe they're miota 9015s in these uh, they also have i think they've used eta in the past and, um, and a few others they also have quartz versions so they'll typically make a watch in both a mechanical and a quartz version to give you the option and what makes them special is not only are the watches fantastic quality uh, the two guys that run it awesome we'll get them on the we'll get them on the live stream they've been on the podcast a couple of times but they also are passionate about American horology. So they originally started off in the, from Venice Beach and they tried to, they started assembling the watches themselves. So, and then they had like, then they got a small team that would assemble them. And now they've outsourced to a watch manufacturer in, or a watch assembly partner, I should say, in, um, Illinois somewhere and I'm, I always think it's the old LG factory but it might not be but um, they they do a lot of work on trying to get as many parts sourced in the US as possible and that's how I know through them that it's near next to impossible to make a 100% American made watch where all the components come from the US because they've tried to do it I think maybe Cameron Weiss might do it because he is actually manufacturing the parts himself and uh, the RGM guys, because they, they manufacture a lot of stuff themselves. But yeah, they their goal is to have a totally US source watch eventually. But yeah, just great, great value, uh, great owners that run it. Um, I've always been impressed with the ones that I've reviewed. Yeah, I owned a Vera for a little while. Yeah. The Field Watch, I think it was the A5 or the C5, one of the two. Oh, yeah. That's and cool. uh, it was a it was a great watch. I just made, I bought the wrong watch. I shouldn't have bought a field watch because now I know I just don't like them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? I think if I bought, I, I think if I bought one of the divers, I think I'd still have it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was just, I mean, highly legible, built really well, um, smooth operation. But I just sat there and looked at. It, I'm like, man, I really don't like field watches. <laughs> Jason, that that is the quote of the day. I'm so happy you said that. I just love it. Yeah, yeah it's just I bought the wrong watch. <laughs> I bought the wrong watch. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think I've I've got that CWC, which is a a field watch, I guess, because it's military. But it's not a style that I gravitate towards. Is is field watches? I prefer more divers or like more yeah. sports watches. Like the I didn't do a wristwatch check, but you probably guessed that I was wearing <laughs> it. Just yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, I, I'm. Uh, yeah, I, I, this is one of my favorite micro bands. Full disclosure: they have sent me watches in for review in the past, but that. Yeah, there's other companies that have sent me watches in the past and I have <laughs> and I don't talk about them anymore. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm hoping to get Ryan and Reagan on. The, one of the interesting things they do as well, they send a survey round to like anybody that registers on their site. So not just existing owners, but anybody that's been interested in the brand. And they'll send through a survey and they'll be like, What do you think of this? What do you think of this? And then they'll show like some concepts that they're thinking of and um, some concept watches. And they'll be like, what do you think of this? Do you like it in this color? And it's a really in-depth survey. And then not only do they do the survey, but they'll send the results out as well. Or they'll come on and talk about the results. And I can't think of another watch company that wow. cares that much about um, what people who, not only the people who buy the watches, but also the people that are interested in their watches. Because like, oh, yeah, you know, you're interested in our watches, but, you know, what do you think we should do? And so on. And, and I know that they... They're, they're very passionate about it. I talk to them quite frequently about, um, you know, about their designs and about, you know, things that, that they're thinking about. But, yeah, I, I'll, hopefully I'll get them on the live stream and you guys can ask them some questions. Um, yeah, that Arctic they got, man, that I think it's the Arctic one. That thing's pretty, yeah. pretty sweet. My buddy who I, I just got into watch collecting because that's what I do to my friends. I um. <laughs> I, you know, the first one's free, guys. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, his first watch is the Zodiac, the Zulu Oscar 9209 that me and my wife have as well. But he just picked up a Scurfa the other day. And he's been putting that through its paces. But he yeah. let me know the other day. He's like, oh, man, I really like the bear stuff. And I told him, I said, hey, look, I got a field watch from there. It was built well. Customer service was excellent. I just, some lucky person on eBay got it for a good price because I don't like field watches. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, Terry makes a great point, and Terry, thanks for joining us on this Sunday social the other day. Um, we haven't talked about any British micro bra micro brands, and there are a few that uh, Alkin here that they mentioned, and there's been a few that I've uh, reviewed on the channel as well. Um, but yeah, th it, we could probably do a whole show on British micro brands themselves. I know this is one of the things that Mike France, uh, Christopher Ward, is very passionate about is the British watchmaking scene and he's part of the British and clock watchmakers society. I think it is. And yeah. you'll find all British uh, micro brands on there, including Christopher Ward, Rod Roger Smith's on there. I think it's watch and clock makers. Um... I think it's the That's initiative fine. British watchmakers initiative. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. It's just the Br yeah British watch and clock makers. Um, it's this is if you're interested in British brands in particular, go on there. It was I think it was set up by Roger Smith and uh, Mike France mm. and Christopher Ward and a few others, but you'll you'll find just a whole host of British watchmakers. So Alkin that uh, Terry just mentioned there, and um, Ulster. Uh, is Rotary yeah, in there? Because I love Rotary. Bamford. Um, yeah, <laughs> I like their logo a lot. There's Clements. Uh, Clements has been on was is on the Facebook group. If you want to ask him any questions, but yeah, there's Farah Fears, of course. Nicholas at Fears. I also think Nicholas is more of an independent than a micro brand. Otherwise, I would have given him a shout out. But Fears are doing some amazing stuff. Um, yeah, their stuff is really, really. That's a great story too. It'd be great if you could get him on because. The whole story about how he found yeah. out that he was just part of the. It's, could you imagine that? You wake up one morning, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. you're like, man, I really love watches. And by lunchtime, your your family's like, hey, you know, we used to own a watch company back in the day. Yeah, yeah. No, Nicholas is definitely going. He, he he's actually. We've tried to get him on the live stream a couple of times, but it's just been that it, the times conflicted. But yeah, he's absolutely always welcome on. We could do a whole show. There's your William Wood there that you mentioned before. Yeah. Hey, Sam, before you get off, I sent you a picture in the Discord. Everybody was asking what kind of G-Shock I wore when I was in service, and I don't have any idea to the reference number because I didn't really pay attention to that stuff back then. But there's a picture, and if anyone can ID it, 
Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you guys can uh, tell me. Well, it's in the well, live stream chat. I can uh, I can share my screen too. I think, but yeah, do you want to share you. your screen? Because I can't it, I can't link it. Yeah, it there's me, no me, link. It wouldn't attach. Do, do you want to? Yeah, let me get my stuff. Make ready. sure you don't dox yourself though. I'm not. I'm not. Let's see. And while you're pulling that up, I'll uh, I'll throw some love to Fears too. I think that Fears Garrick collab that they did this last year is probably one of my favorite watches of the entire year. Yeah, the California. Oh, look at that in the uniform and everything. <laughs> so anyone I think I identify, that's all I can show. I can't show too much. So if anyone can identify that one, feel free to. I'm stopping the screen because there's stuff in the background. I don't want to show too much. <laughs> Top secret. It's not really, but I don't want to be that dude. Awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to the panel for joining us. We'll close it off now. I really appreciate everyone, it, all of the great suggestions for micro brands in the uh, in the comments section. So thanks, everyone. And um, we'll see you. We're um, we both have a little bit of a funny conflict on Sunday. So if we're going to try and do a show, but if for any reason we can't, we'll let everyone know well ahead of time. But uh, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time on Casual Watch Talk Live. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys. Good night.